Hello, my name is Amy and I work at the Hampton Park branch of the Forsyth County Public Library. And today I'd like to show you a few simple projects that you can do around the house using things that you probably have already. One of those things that you can use and reuse are some empty food boxes. As most of us are eating at home more and um, using up our, the food that we do have, you um, can find a lot of empty food boxes around the house. You want to find a food box that has not had contact between the food and the box. And a cereal box is a good example of that kind of a box to use. The cereal is usually packaged in a bag so it doesn't have any direct contact with the cardboard box that it was packaged in. And in fact, that's going to be our first supply that you'll need for the first project that we're going to work on. If you want to pause the video and find an empty cereal box, or if there's just a little cereal left, just take out the bag, and we'll make our first project. All right, let me show you the project and then we'll talk about the other supplies that you need. We are going to make a cute notebook from the cereal box. All right. Find a nice, sturdy, clean cereal box for your first part of your supplies. Okay, I'll put that down here. All right, another, another thing that you will need is some copier paper. This is just plain old copier paper. You can use lined paper also, just notebook paper or you can use graph paper, whichever you would like, but you want to have a supply of that. You don't need very many pages, but you just want to find some of that to have handy. All right, another kind of paper that you'll need is just some decorative paper that you could use. This is some scrapbook paper. You could also use some um, wrapping paper um, or any other kind of paper that you want to use to decorate your notebook. Another thing that you will need is some tape or glue or a tape runner. This is an Elmer's tape runner, which is probably the easiest to use. It's very handy. Um, it's not messy, and it just um, adheres the paper right to the cardboard easily. All right, that's another thing to use. <clears throat> you will need some strong thread also and a needle um, to pull that thread through. This is some embroidery thread. You could also use yarn um, and you could also avoid the sewing part of it which is very small and not intimidating um, but you could avoid that by using some strong glue as well. It would probably work just the same. Okay, so get that thread together. And you also want to get some old buttons together. You just need one button for each notebook. Uh, if you can find some of those around. And let's see what else do we need here. And I think those are all the supplies that we will need for this project. Okay. The first thing that we will do then is we'll take our cereal box and we'll cut out either the front or the back um, or both however many notebooks you want to make. Each side of the box can make one notebook. So one cereal box can make two notebooks. So we'll just cut that out and we'll end up with this. Once you cut that out. All right, so start forming our cover and this is going to be um, our step number one is cutting this out and folding it over in half. We'll just fold it so that the picture is on the inside so it will leave us with this plain cover. You will make just make a nice crease with your thumb once you get it folded over. Kind of take a look at your cover. This is going to be your cover of your notebook and trim up any uneven edges if there are some. She bottoms a little bit uneven. Kind of trim that up a little bit here and um, make it nice. Nice and even, so we've got a good cover there. Okay. Once we've got a good cover, again, we're folding it so the design is on the inside so we can decorate the outside. But if you do have a, if you have a cute cereal box cover that you really like, then you can use it on the outside too. It's your choice. Okay. The next thing we want to do is get our pages together. So we'll get our notebook paper. This is going to be step two, is trimming our pages. 
you'll see um, we'll fold our paper in half. So depending on how many pages you want in your notebook, you'll get half as many um, pieces of paper together. Um, I had 10 uh, pieces of notebook paper in my sample that I made earlier to give me 20 pages in the notebook. Um, and you can decide how many you want to use. All right, so you'll fold your paper in half and you'll hold it up. You'll see that the paper is bigger than the cereal box cover. So we'll need to trim our paper. And that's going to be step two. You can measure everything. You can get a ruler or you can just take the easy way out like I'm going to do. I'm just going to pull my paper out a little bit, leaving it. You can see it's just a little bit inside the cover here. I'm going to just trim it even with this edge. So I'm going to do that first. Okay. And you can see it's still going to be pretty close to that. So I'm going to scoot it just a little bit farther. Trim it once more. Just make sure it will fit neatly inside the cover. The size of the book. Now you can see, if I scoot that down, you can see that it fits nicely inside there. It leaves a little bit of margin on each side here. But it is overhanging the edge here. So we're going to need to trim that part as well. I'm going to just pull the pages out a little bit further and trim along this edge here. And then that will put it a little bit inside the notebook. I'm going to have to hold it a little bit more tightly to trim it. Okay. Those scraps over there and then scoot it back in and you'll see now that the pages fit nicely inside the notebook. They're all the way inside. So you can see how that is. So then we have it all put together um, and trimmed. Okay. At this stage you can decide if you would like to keep the edges of the notebook and the paper square or if you want to round the corners you can take um, just a tape. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. The edge of a tape here draw a circle there and make the edges rounded like I did in my sample and I'll show you that real quickly so you can see how these edges here are rounded rather than left square and I also trimmed the paper so that it's rounded also this gives it kind of a nice finished look or you can leave it square if you'd like it's up to you Also, before we get too far, I'll show you another um, example that I made here of just a tiny memo pad. This is kind of about half the size of the other notebooks that I made so that it just um, would fit in your purse really easily too. And you make it just the same way. So you can follow these same steps to make a smaller memo pad as well. So I'll just show you the um, contrasting sizes. You can see the different sizes that you can make. All right. So once we get our paper trimmed, paper ready, um, which is step two, we're going to go to step three, which is going to be sewing on our button. Again, if you want to avoid any sewing altogether, you can use a strong glue and um, glue the button on. But at this point, you'll want to get your needle and thread ready um, to sew on a button. You're going to have a, want to cut a long piece of thread. This is about 30 plus inches, just 35 inches or so. And you want to thread your needle and leave a short piece, which we're going to use to sew on the button. And you want to have a long, this long piece left on um, to wrap around the notebook. I'll show you again on our sample how that works. So once we sew the button on, we want to be left with a long, piece of thread that we can actually wrap around the button and around the, I think I'm just going around and around this, um, and around the notebook. And that's how we secure the notebook. <clears throat> you can see how that works here. So we just take it from the button, wrap it around a few different times, and then secure it around the button here. And that's how we hold it closed. So you can see that. So you want to have the short part of the thread. It's just one piece, but you want to have a short piece and 
a long piece. And I'm going to pause this for a second. All right. Uh, sorry about that phone call noise. And let's go ahead and secure our button. This is step three of our project. So we're going to just take our thread, our long thread with the short piece at the top. Um, we will poke a hole through the cardboard here and pull it through. And we will then pull it through one of the holes of the button. And we'll hold the button on there and we will poke it back through into the other hole of the button through to the back of the cardboard. And then we will have made one stitch there. Now we'll poke it back through the first hole again. Pull it through. Poke it, poke it through the second hole. And through. And let me pause that and I'll want to go ahead and do that a couple more times and then I'll show you how to tie it off. All right, once you've got your button securely on there, you're going to want to cut your thread up here um, toward the needle and put your um, needle away there. And you're going to want to use your um, short thread, keep, actually keep your needle kind of handy nearby. We're going to use it to help us um, thread, um, secure the thread to the box. Just make a loop in your thread, your short thread that is, okay. and then just kind of hold your needle into um, one of these loops here that's at the bottom, not the main loop, but one of the loops uh, between the thread loop and the other. Pull it down toward the bottom of the box, and it will secure it that way. Let me show you one more time. Let's make a neat loop there. Kind of leave it open a little bit. This is going to be our inside of our big loop, but between these two pieces of the thread, stick your needle in there and hold it down, and it will make it stay near to the box. Okay. Once you've got that secured on there, you're going to carefully cut that shorter thread and then we'll be finished with that one. That will leave us, we'll put our needle somewhere safe, and that will leave us with our longer thread and our button secured to the front cover. Now we can wrap our thread around and secure the thread around the button just to make our secure cover there. Okay, so that is step number three. Step number four involves a little bit more sewing, but it's super simple. Um, sewing the pages into or onto the cover. All right, we've got our trimmed pages. That we're going to get back over here. And we've got um, some more of the embroidery thread again. And we've got just enough thread. We want to make sure a little bit more than it takes to to sew this whole um, across the whole middle of the box. This should be plenty. We'll just need a little bit more. And we're going to make our thread uh, double wide. So you want to keep your needle in the middle part of a long thread and we're going to um, tie a knot at the end of these two threads by kind of looping it around your finger kind of rub it together and pull, pull the thread down and it makes a nice knot that way. If you're used to sewing, um, that's, that's the way that you can make a simple thread. So we've got a nice um, <clears throat> length of embroidery thread, again a double wide, so we'll keep it together there. And again, if you want to, um, it, if you're going to include a lot of pages in your notebook, it's sometimes easier to go ahead and poke a few holes in the cover um, to make it a little bit easier to sew, or you can just keep on you know, using your strength to pull it through. So we're putting our trimmed pages here in the middle. We folded them earlier, made a nice crease. We've got a nice crease in our cover and we're going to put them together and we are going to start, we're going to keep this thread out of the way so we don't get confused. 
We're going to start with our knotted thread here. We're going to start in the, on the back of our notebook here. Uh, pick one side or the other. We're going to poke a hole into the seam of the cover, that part that we folded over nicely, and make sure it goes into the seam of the paper. And I'll poke that through there. <clears throat> and pull the thread through. All right. So now we've got our knot on the outside of the cover here. That's our first part of our stitch. Then we're just going to decide how long we want to make our stitches, maybe about a centimeter or so, maybe a little bit longer. And we're going to poke through the paper through the cover and pull our needle all the way through there. Okay. Again, making sure that we're staying in the, the crease of the um, cover and the crease of the paper. And then we'll make another stitch from the cover through and through the pages. And in the middle, you can see the needle coming through the middle here of the pages in that through and just repeat that all the way until you get to the end of the notebook. I'm going to pause the video and go ahead and complete that part of the project. Okay, so we've made several stitches and we're just ready to make our last stitch. You want to make sure that you are poking it through um, the pages, through the cover, kind of close to the top there so that you can make sure that you are securing the top of the pages as well. Pull that through. All right, and now we've got this all the way through. A seam here, all the way on the outside, and a seam on the all the way on the inside here. We've got our long thread still here. So now we've got our last stitch here at the end, um, at the top of the notebook. We want to cut our thread and leave ourselves plenty of um, thread to tie the knot there. <clears throat> So let's pull apart these two threads here and we'll just tie some simple knots. That's just a few. So we have two, three, four knots. One, two, three. To secure our uh, pages to our cover. All right. And we are finished with step four. One more step to go. All we are going to do next is decide on a paper that we want to use. Whoops. To um, doesn't want to stay together. To decorate the outside of our cover, you can leave it plain if you want. You can color it with sharpie. You can use washi tape. Um, however you want to do it, but I think we'll use some of our. Well, let's see. Let me use a different paper here. That's got more of the different colors. We've got a red button and the blue thread. I think this paper will work really nice with that. So we'll take our scrapbook paper. We will kind of put it up here against the length of our cover and we will cut a piece that's wide enough to wrap around both sides. So we're going to cover the seam that we just sewed on the outside with the decorative paper. Hold that here. I'm going to cut along this top edge. And make our paper just long enough to do that. All right. I'm going to trim this edge a little bit since it's a little bit off of the stripes that are there. Just make a nice neat edge with that part. And we've got that. <clears throat> I want to fold this in half where you can make it a little bit uneven size if you want to. It's up to you however you want to make your project. I'll make a nice crease there. And that crease will cover the edge of our notebook and cover up those stitches that we did here. Okay. Once we get that in the right way and set, I'm going to trim this edge a little bit more since it's still a little bit long. I'm going to go along exactly with the top of the notebook. And actually, I think I'm going to flip this page, paper so that the blue part is in the front, the blue and the red, so it'll match a little bit nicely, more nicely. 
seems a little bit more. I don't want it to be too long. It can kind of hang over the edge and bother us that way. All right. Here I'm going to use, again, you can use tape, glue, whatever you'd like. I'm going to use my glue runner and put some strips of tape here on this back part. Strips of the glue along the edge and the inside edge. And, oops, it's on the table. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to scoot my notebook up here and secure that down to the cardboard cover. Make sure those threads are inside there. All right. And then I will secure the front. I don't know if you can see that still loose there. Put my glue here on the front. And I'm close to the seam. I'm going to fold that over really tightly and smooth that down. I kind of like this just the way that it is here. We've got our spree thread. We can wrap around the notebook, secure with our, around our button. Um, on the sample one that I made before, it was kind of a plain taper, just this um, small purple polka dotted. So I did this extra kind of bright stripe there to decorate it a little bit more. But actually, I think I'm going to leave this one like that. It's got the bright button and the paper and the bright thread already. So that completes our notebook, uh, which is a very fun project from a really simple thing that we would most likely just recycle without using um, anything else. And I want to show you a couple of other projects that, that you can also do with empty food boxes. Another project is to make a little desk set, especially since we've been, a lot of us have been working at home. You can use some smaller boxes, cut them to whichever size you'd like, cover them.